Card Zero, Echoes of the 99, by August Servant, Volume 1. Lecture 26, Fairness versus Righteousness. Fairness is an edict, meaning a proclamation or assertion, not to be confused with righteousness, which is a virtue. And because fairness is merely a judgment call, based on the opinion of another person entrusted to uphold a rule or guideline previously understood by all parties involved. The thing is, it can only be adjudicated if someone is there to witness the infraction. And sometimes, even the eye of a camera lens is not sufficient to accurately capture a perceived violation. However, with righteousness as the moral authority in play, no witness is required due to the inherent integrity dwelling in the righteous person, whose moral compass is true, in the light for all to see, as well as in the darkness without a soul around. Now then, the righteous don't compete. They trust in universal good, or God, and the sanctity of due process in commerce, while taking their satisfaction in a job well done from honest and productive labor. Whereas those who compete must cast their lots and peddle their wares on the mercy of a system designed solely for turning a profit. And the problem with a competitive capitalistic model such as this is that nobody smart plays fair. And with enough bribes in place, any semblance of the observance of rules can be ever so subtly subverted, undermined, or outright corrupted from the top down. There is the right way, the wrong way, and the easy way. So where fairness must rely on the honesty of others, righteousness focuses only on the right knowledge. And what makes this so poignant is the fact that the right knowledge can lead your way just as surely as a beam of light. What do you mean? Light serves two purposes. First, to illuminate our path, that we may clearly see where we are going, that we may proceed with confidence. Second, to reveal to us the obstacles, dangers, and the no man's land, to say, the darkness that lies on the fringes of the shadows. A piece of scripture comes to mind, Proverbs 22.3, the prudent see danger and take refuge, but the simple keep going and pay the penalty. In other words, the wise man is where danger is not. And what makes him so wise is the fact that he is enlightened by righteousness to say the knowledge and understanding that dwells in him. If life is a test, are you failing? No matter where you come from, how connected you are, or how powerful you may think yourself to be, there are some lessons in life that must be learned hands on through raw and unforgiving experience. I use the term unforgiving to signify the harsh reality that experience is a cruel teacher because it gives us the exam first and then the lesson. But at the end of the day, we must learn. And most times, we are rarely prepared for the consequences or cost of the lesson beforehand. Now then, man's savior died on the cross if only for a moment. And was there ever a better soul that walked the earth? And yet, did Jesus not say in John 15, 18, and if the world hates you, know that it hated me first, to say that he knew that as Christians, nothing will come easy for us. And this is why he had to leave, to prepare a way for us from behind the scenes, with a knowing that our enemies can't fight what they can't see, nor tread in the realm of spirit where we the believers take both our strength and our refuge. And still, God is watching. And while the agnostic or non-believer would ask, but why? Wouldn't we all be better served if God offered a helping hand from time to time? For what is the point in watching if you cannot change the outcome? And while that question is fair, the hard truth is you cannot know or accept the answer 
unless you be born again. What do you mean? Just as evil moves in the shadows like any predator would, concealing its movements and thereby making it difficult for its prey to see or detect, God moves in the spirit and speaks in the language of signs, dreams, intuition, inspiration, and hunches. And unless you are attuned to his vibration or frequency by way of Christ consciousness, though you have eyes, you will not see. Though you have ears, you will not hear. And though you may be accredited with degrees and accolades from many institutions of higher learning, you will not perceive his presence, even as he yet lies asleep within you. And if we're being honest, it's far more deeper than that. To say, need I remind you, Jesus lives, and he did not resurrect himself. Besides that, how many times did Jesus have to remind us, don't you believe that I am in the Father, and that the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. John 14.10 So if you're paying attention, while no one can convince a non-believer of the workings of God without sounding crazy or worse, what we the believers can do is demonstrate the presence of God working within us, citing the many examples of Jesus and the actions or acts of his known disciples. To say that we are all living testimonials, though the non-believers know it not. We are not alone. Understand that as long as we are in this world, God is with us. The reason being, this life is not to prepare us for the world, but for the kingdom of heaven, our ultimate destination. And what better testing ground in finding the true measure of a man than this rock that we call home? For now, anyway. The cost of faith. There are some blessings in life that God requires payment up front before you will be allowed to see, feel, know, and understand. This is why cheaters never prosper, because of their lack of faith in themselves. And this is also why evil has a ceiling and will never be able to rise any further, because faith gives us wings. Understand that Satan and his minions will take you as is, and the more down and out you are, the better for them to possess you, if only in mind. And their strength over you lies in your inability or unwillingness to stand up for yourself. Thus, the longer you refuse to want more, climb, or seek a higher vantage point for yourself, the greater their hold over you, even as all the ropes and chains bonding you to them are of your own making, if only in your mind. And if we're being honest, this is also why those that appear to have everything that they ever bargained for still remain sad and depressed despite their riches. Because man does not live by bread and bread alone. And no physical reward or lever in this world can lift up a broken soul or a fallen spirit. Ever wonder why rich people seem to die young? The oldest people alive today are modest and meek. This is why cheaters, thieves, bullies, and evil people in general truly never linger for long. Because they can't. The reason being, with every unconscionable act they commit outwardly, they also strike a balancing blow against themselves inwardly, and thereby adding to their own dis-ease, disease, and ultimate demise, death. Righteousness is the fountain, and as we drink from it, we are sustained in an ever youthful spirit, despite our physical years or aged appearance. For as it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. Salah.
the warrior's creed. The warrior's prayer, Psalm of David, 144. Praise be to the Lord, my rock, who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle. He is my loving God, my fortress, my stronghold and my deliverer, my shield in whom I take refuge, who subdues people under me. My prayer as a soldier. And now I bow my head to say a prayer for the damage I have done. And may I not disgrace the memory of my forefathers as I stand alone, the forgotten son. Grant me the strength to face my fears head on, and may my enemies possess the courage to confront me and not hide. And I pray to you, Lord, that your Holy Spirit finds me as we walk through the darkness side by side. And on a side note, this very prayer kept me sane enough to hold it together in battle. Or was it my prayers being answered that did the trick? With the moral here being, if God is both the gift and the giver, then why can't prayer be both the cause as well as the effect? My creed. Higher awareness leads to the path of higher ascension by virtue of raising your vibrational state, thereby resulting in a cleansing of character due to clearer thoughts with a clean mindset. And the reason why this is so important is because the peace you seek, as well as the answers, are already within you. We just can't see them because of the darkness of ignorance and the fog of ego that works to cloud our judgment. Thus, our principal goal should always be to push ourselves past the conformity of our fears and the mental blocks of our traditions that we may venture straight over the edge of our programming, off the grid, and fall within ourselves only to discover a whole new world inside of us. Dialogue. If this life has taught me one thing, it's that, contrary to popular belief, we hold and cling on to others for our sake, not for theirs. And just as when trying to save a drowned victim, it is not uncommon for the victim to pull down his or her rescuer and thus ultimately drowning them both. It can be just as easy to hurt the ones we love by not knowing when to let go. And if you ask me, I'd rather have one good night and enjoy the memory for the rest of my life than try to make or force a happily ever after. With the moral here being, People are too fragile for commitment, and life could care less about our grand plans. Therefore, one should say to the other, while I honestly can't promise you tomorrow, here in this moment, you have my undivided attention. And if by chance we were to use this time to make a few good memories together, then wouldn't I always be with you? God. One. Man deals with the possible. God deals with the impossible. Two, God is patient. Why? Because God recycles. Three, whatever you're impressed with, God is disappointed. With the moral here being, there simply is no ceiling to personal growth. I submit to you, be worthy. Please allow me to introduce myself. You can call me August Servant, and it is a privilege to bring to you my captured Echoes of the 99 by way of Card Zero, the Fool.